Today I'm going to show you how to use an AI tool called Crea.ai. And this tool is interesting because it's a hybrid between a text prompt and a sketch tool. So what's nice is that you can sketch while generating real AI images in real time. So to get there, go to Crea.ai and go to the Generate tab and Real Time. So you'll see a sample of a couple shapes and the AI image generated on the right. And there's a slider, so you can type text in. So in this case, I've typed forested hillside, aerial view. I can say eye level and see how that changes. And so it's, it's giving you kind of a, an interpretation of the text prompt. But there's also geometry here. And as you're changing this geometry and adding your own, you're seeing the image update in real time. And you can control how much bias the text and sketch have um, with the slider. So if you pull this down, it's going to be more accurate to the sketch. If you move it to the right, it'll bias more towards the text prompt, um, virtually ignoring the sketching. So you can find the balance that you're looking for um, with that slider. So just to turn that off, I can start using the paintbrush and I can set the color and size of the brush. So for example, I've said forested hillside, eye view of bridge, uh, eye level. So if I wanted to show an eye level view of a bridge, maybe I would want it to look like this if it's going to be receding kind of in perspective and it's an interpretation of this so there's not always a perfect uh, interpretation of the drawing let's see if we can get it to do this and I'm going to pull this down to bias the sketch a little bit more Maybe a variation of that. I'm also going to hit refresh. So it's, it's trying to interpret this sketch and it's having a tough time doing that. Now we're getting a little closer. What if I scale this a little bit? So again, it doesn't know exactly the angle that I'm looking for, but it's going to try to interpret it. That's a little bit closer. Let's see what happens if I fill this in with kind of a lighter gray. And I want this to be kind of interpreted as a road. This blue box, it's understanding that as the sky, but again, it's based on the interpretation of this. So, you know, if I said blue truck, it may interpret that as a blue truck. But I'm going to do this and continue to expand that out. And again, it's taking everything from this image, including the background that it's interpreting. So to change the background, you can go to Canvas Background, go to Photos, and update it here. And again, it doesn't know what this image is in particular, but it's just going to use the kind of influence of the colors, the texture to create an interpretation on the right. So it's a combination. You're working with existing images, sketching that you're doing, and uh, the text prompt. So it's an interesting kind of workflow, um, but it can lead to some kind of unexpected results. And I'll do this. So right now we have this. Let's see what happens when we start changing the text prompt. Actually, I'll hit Control Z. What if we take the same drawing and then just change this to concrete mid-rise tower in forest? Not the most realistic scenario, but this is uh, the idea. And as I go further to the left, it's going to follow this geometry 
even more closely. So that's just one example of that. And so with that same prompt, I'm going to start changing the sketch. Maybe it's this kind of series of frames. And again, more closely related further away. Um, and I think the color contrast is kind of an issue at the moment. It's kind of blending in with the background. So here you can see it's starting to take shape and it's very true to this. So any imperfections, it's picking up on those. If I pull up the strength and you know use this as a more generic influence, it's going to start bringing this to a little bit better uh, resolution. Maybe I don't like that shape. Um, there's preset shapes you can use. So rectangle here. This is blue. I can change that color if I like to something more subtle. And again, it's trying to solve this for the perspective, trying to give you a, an image that's believable, that's kind of realistic. And again, the further we go to the right, the more kind of creative freedom it has to interpret this prompt. The more, um, the more that we bring this down, the, the more accurate it'll be towards the sketch. Right. And so as we change colors, so you have to drop first and then you can change the color in the case of these shapes. I'll add wood soffit. And now it's interpreting that orange as a wood soffit. We can add roof, garden, hanging, landscape. And then if I start adding that, it'll interpret this as hanging landscape. So not always what exactly we're looking for. Like, why is that ledge painted green? But then as we start playing with the slider, it's going to start to use this text a little bit more as a one-to-one -one and a little bit uh, less influence from the sketching. All right, so you can upload images. Um, let's bring in an image. So let's say there's past work that you have that you want to incorporate. Um, it'll use this uh, in that image prompt. So again, it's going to take colors, lighting, all of that. Um, yeah, it's going to do its best to try to interpret what this image is in relation to what you've told it here. So kind of an interesting scenario here. This has a white background, so it's trying to navigate what that means here with this forest. But what if we did something like that? Or maybe more of a blank canvas. So part of it is we're not really describing this. So we can say concrete, wishbone, geometry, sculptural. And let's bring this down a little to see what that gives us. And this can be stretched. So 
So I can right click it and say bring to front if I want this to be in the front. And so again, as I'm moving these things around, it's trying to interpret what we're meaning, what we're looking for in all of this. I'm going to delete that. And bring this back to more text prompt scale. And just to illustrate this paintbrush tool, if I wanted to give this some kind of smooth wishbone support, we'll see how that interprets here. You can see it's starting to play and influence. And it kind of got this more cartoon-like graphic when we went to this backdrop. So the background does uh, have a sway on the mood, the type of image that it's creating. Right, so all this greenery now makes it think, okay, this is more of a realistic image that we're looking for. And I can add things like glass, changing the color to be a little bit more subtle. We'll say reflective glass. Again, as we get closer to this text, now it starts becoming more reflective, trying to interpret this kind of diagonal that you see here. Go back to the paintbrush. Let's say we like that and we want to accentuate something here. You know, and again, it's a feedback loop. So as you're sketching, you're getting ideas from the AI and you can start incorporating them and kind of working off of what it's giving you. So let's do this here. And you can change the size of the brush. I'm just leaving it as is. But it's an interesting interpretation of that prompt. And again, as I go to the right, it's going to try to get closer to the text. And this looks cool, but unsupported. Let's give it some columns. I'll say concrete wishbone columns. Now we have a column there. Um, so as you start playing with the slider, you'll see some other options, but I think at least it understands what we're looking for. And again, it's not doing much because in that case, this is kind of blending in with the background, but it gives us an interesting kind of work, work set here. And the thickness of the brush does matter. Um, very thin brush strokes don't have as much of an impact. The other thing that I think is happening is it's building off of itself. It's kind of a sequential iteration process. It's taking one image, trying to learn from it when it creates the next. Um, so it's not like each one is starting over. It's very much a kind of a step-by-step -step learning process as you're working. And as you use the tool, just like anything else, you'll get better at trying to understand how it thinks. Um, yeah. So enjoy exploring this. When you want to completely adjust everything, you can hit variation, and it's going to come up with other interpretations that, again, you can toggle and explore. But again, they're interpretations of the text and this sketch that you're compiling. And one more thing, if you're happy with the image, you can always save it or you can upscale it here as well. And the way the uh, pay process goes with the software, 
um, is you pay per compute unit. So um, there you have compute credits and um, different plans will get you a different number of credits. So for free, you can work with this for a certain number of compute credits per day and explore. So good luck with the explorations and uh, have fun.